Hello my loves, welcome back to another reading vlog and today we're going to do a chill reading vlog for those of you that are here a lot. <laughs> we're going to be spending this vlog reading the books that T-Bell Cluedo picked for me this month. <gasps> so excited! <laughs> So not all of them, we're going to be reading three that they picked for me. We're going to be reading the three that the super prompts picked for me. So a goal this year is to read more of the super prompts from TBR Cluedo. So these are the ones that aren't the little books that are on these spaces, but they are the weapons that I can pick. And I basically have not been using them enough. <laughs> So it's a real goal for me to use them more. And so I thought it would just be fun to do a dedicated vlog for the books that have been picked for me this month using the Super Cluedo prompts. And then we'll just integrate them into other videos. But I thought this month it would be fun to do. So I will leave this month's January TBR Cluedo linked down below if you wanted to go back and watch the whole experience. You're a little bit crooked. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to go back and I feel like you're still crooked. <laughs> If you wanted to go back and watch the whole experience, because for some of these it was an experience. Okay. So first we have The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This was picked by the magnifying glass, which is recommended by the viewer. So I have my all my unread books video that I do every year. When I get the magnifying glass, I have to go randomize the comments from that video. And the first book that appears that someone loved, I have to read. Uh, this is in a list with a few other books. So if that does happen, I do get to pick whatever <laughs> book from the list I want to read. But I'm a little bit nervous about this because me and Tiffany D. Jackson, I have read two books from her and I gave them three stars and I think a 2.5. Tiffany D. Jackson synopses excite me like no other. I get so excited for her books, but then I'm seeming not to love them, but I feel like I should get a five star soon. I feel like if I don't give this like at least a 3.5 or a 4, I kind of mm, I have to stop reading Danny Jackson. I don't know, I just feel like it's not fair to her to keep picking up her books and reviewing them badly and rating them low. So I really hope that we're gonna have success with this one. I just know it's a carry retelling focusing on like racial inequality and injustice. Then we have The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. This was picked from the Rose Prompt, which is if I get that, I have to pick a book out of this jar that my patrons have chosen for me. It's very full now. And two of my patrons had picked this when I pulled it out. It was either one of them. I don't know whose it was, but it was one of theirs. I don't really want to know much going into this. I just know it's a very weird book and we are following a woman and her husband has left her for a younger, better, newer woman. A woman that looks just like her. Okay. It That's suspicious. That's weird. It's pitched as Big Little Lies meets Black Mirror, and I loved Big Little Lies when I read it. So very intrigued about this. I don't. I feel like I could fall on either side of loving or not liking this. And then finally, we had the dagger, which is a random number generator. I have to go to my TBR and pick a random number. And the one it picked after a few attempts of picking books that were already on TBR Cluedo uh, was the Cartographers by Peng Shepherd. This one has had mixed reviews. I know it's like magical realismy, and we're following. A girl who her and her father were really renowned map makers and her father has been killed and she thinks it's to do with this particular map. I've heard not the best things about this but I'm really excited to see what I think and to give it a go. So those are the three books that we're going to be reading in this vlog and let's just get into it and see what we think of TBR Kudo's picks. So I have started with The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I don't know what I said to you in the intro, but this is me and Tiffany Jackson's last chance. That's quite dramatic. And I just kept feeling like it's not fair on her, really, for me to keep reading her books if I keep writing them low. So this is my last chance. I have read the first 100 pages. We've got to the end of part one. I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying this. This is by far the best initial reaction I've ever had to a Tiffany D. Jackson. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! What? This is a carry retelling, but very much focused on kind of racial injustice and ra racial injustice and racism. So we know kind of from the beginning there's a podcast set, I think about 10 years in the future, 
from the events that we're reading about in the book. And from the podcast, we know that at the end of the book, there's going to be a prom where most of the kids, you know, and everyone says that Maddie did it. And then in the past, we're following Maddie, who at the beginning is trying to pass as white, but then there's a rainstorm that she gets caught in. Her hair becomes like an afro. She had straightened it previously. And um, everyone kind of finds out that she's black and she's bullied for it. I don't want to say much more because I think there's a few elements to this book that I didn't realise were going to be in it and have been a pleasant shock. So I don't want to say too much, but I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. So I think the audiobook is the way to read this. I'm debating just listening to the whole rest of it just via the audio. I'm going to go cook dinner. Now it's my night. I'm making an enchilada mix. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I do that. And then I have got reading sprints tonight with my patrons, but I could just like play some games on my Switch and listen to the audiobook in the sprints because I've read like a I read probably the last 20 pages physically and audibly and I didn't quite enjoy it as much as just audibly so we've got a podcast section I'm really enjoying we've got like a full cast for this it's really really good um and then we're following different storylines we're following Maddie's storyline she's got a very strict racist essentially dad who's forced her to pass as white we're following a black uh, I think he's an American football player in the school who kind of doesn't want to get involved in like race and stuff like that. He wants to focus on going to university. And then we're following one of the girls who kind of bullied uh, Maddie when it first was revealed that she was black and they were throwing pencils and into her hair. And we're kind of following her grappling with, she wasn't necessarily the ringleader of that, but she did participate in it and think at the time it was funny. And now she's kind of looking at what she did in a different light. The writing in it is really great. I think all the character voices, are interesting are you know there's characters in this that you don't like but they they don't almost feel like uh unrealistic you know as terrible as it is as it is to say I have met people like this and not quite on the same tone because obviously I live in England and I think this kind of like America South racism is like a different it's not something we necessarily have an equivalent of here but you know I've met people with along similar lines and it feels I feel like Tiffany Jackson is writing this from a place of not this isn't like something that I would wish upon anyone but of experience and of living something similar I will say I have not read Carrie and I feel like there's probably a lot of direct parallels to Carrie all I know about Carrie I think is that there's like mixed media like news reports and stuff and I guess that's the function of the podcast is serving in this but I think I've heard people say that there's like real direct mirroring of some scenes and that is going over my head so there could be aspects of this that I really enjoy that are like I, I really enjoy because they were something that Carrie did did first and then this is kind of copying not that that's a bad thing but I just don't know where the refer references begin and end if that makes sense but I think this could be me and Tiffany Jackson's like our success story. We're finally gonna be friends. Hello, cuties. How are we doing? So I have to apologize to you. I have to apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. I last checked in with you when I was 100 pages into the weight of blood, and then my mental health. <laughs> she had an episode. Okay. I actually can't tell the last time I was happy. I literally can't tell you. Nothing bad, but just the past few days, I just had a bit of a dip where like, I did not want to film. I did not want to be on camera. When I get like that, I don't want to be perceived. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to have to come on here and I don't know. I, and I don't think I'm very good at acting like everything's okay when it's not. I think you guys know by now I'm a bit of an open book and I don't know. When I'm in that mood, I just don't make myself film. It's my shirt. Okay, good. Sometimes I put this on inside out when I film and it's so embarrassing. So yeah, I just don't make myself film when I get like that and I was still <laughs> okay to read and so I finished The Weight of Blood, okay? Now, what rating am I giving this? Drum roll, please. Five stars! <laughs> stars I knew <laughs> I knew Tiffany D Jackson had a five star in her for me I knew it all along I just kept trying I kept searching all oh, five stars <laughs> I'm so happy. So I actually listened to all of this, I think, by via the audiobook. I was really enjoying just the speed of the audiobook that I was listening to and I wasn't reading it physically. I was just really enjoying consuming it that way. So I just let myself play my Switch game unpacking where you're unpacking a little house. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, listen to all of this via the audiobook. And I'm so glad I did that. I think the audiobook is great. I would recommend reading this via the audiobook, like the podcast, the sound effects. I think all the narrators do such a wonderful 
wonderful job and I just loved it. I thought it was great. Now I do just want to preface <laughs> this review by saying I have not read Carrie. I have not seen Carrie. I have I know nothing about Carrie, right? And some of the reviews that I've read on Goodreads and seen people say from people who have read Carrie are like, it's a bit too close. Like it's a bit too like direct an adaptation. And so when I, <laughs> in this, there were moments I was like, <gasps> like gagged, a little bit gagged by stuff. I think my enjoyment is probably higher because I have not read Carrie. I think people's enjoyment will probably be higher if they have not read or consumed the story of Carrie because I was kind of shocked at moments, but obviously you wouldn't be if you have read Carrie. And what I thought this book did so well was just showing the different levels of racism that exist because I think, I think something that people often say, I mean, in this book, there's like outright terrible racists, like, evil human beings um but there's also people a lot of people in this book that like would just say oh I have unconscious bias oh it's unconscious bias but unconscious bias is still racism right it's still racist it's still rooted in racist beliefs unconscious bias oh I have unconscious bias it's still racism right and I think this book did a good job of showing that and unpacking I guess the beliefs that people can have especially when they grow up in a small town like this that doesn't question biases and just allows them to fester and rot kind of the assumptions that people can have and I think it had a good job of having characters who were kind of like villains that we could just hate and then having other characters that like I feel like Tiffany D Jackson was kind of trying to get you to sympathize with or to connect to in a way but like I didn't want to I was kind of resisting that and I think that was an interesting play for her to kind of use but I really loved the way that this hopped between like perspectives like we'd be in a chapter but there'd be lots of different scenes in a chapter and lots of different perspectives I loved the podcast element I loved the full cast audiobook I thought it was incredibly well written I loved it <laughs> I loved it. I knew me and Tiffany D. Jackson would be besties one day. I kept trying. <laughs> this is my third go and we finally got a five star. And also this was the first, I think, YA, like set at high school, like YA high school book that I've really loved in a while. Like the last one I can think of is maybe Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. Like I haven't been having the best luck with like, you know, YA books set at high school. I felt like the characters were really realistic for that kind of age. Maddie, our main character, was a very interesting character because she's grown up so sheltered and given so much misinformation. And I just thought, I don't know, I just really loved seeing her character develop. So yeah, I loved this. The audiobook was perfect. Unpacking was great to play with it. So yeah, I'm so glad that I finally got around. Well, it hasn't been out that long, but I really wanted to get to this last year. So I'm really glad that I finally got around to this. I think next we will read The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I don't know if I'm going to start it today. I do have some patron reading sprints later. It is Saturday today, but I don't know if I might read other stuff. I've got some like patrony bits that I need to read. So this will be the next book I'm starting for this vlog, but I don't know if it'll be the next book I start in general. But yeah, I don't know what to think of this. I <laughs> know it's going to be weird but um I've only really heard good things and it's pretty short and pitched as big little eyes meets black mirror so it's made for me so hopefully we'll have good luck we are gonna go head out on a new walk today that we've never been on that's nearby so I'm very excited <laughs> Up a new walk and I just got the audiobook for the Echo Wife to try and make myself read it quicker because I'm not feeling super motivated I'm hoping the audiobook will help me because it usually does when I'm like struggling to get into a book so I'm gonna try and read some of that in the car and I'll see you later I always am way more chaotic when I film on my phone I'm like whoa <laughs> Okay, hi. Um, 
I am halfway through The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey and I'm really bored. You better f***ing take that back right now. You better f***ing stop, 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 stop right stop. now. Ah, I'm really bored. I'm really bored. Okay. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't think you should know much going into this. I didn't know much. I don't think you should go know much. Just know her husband has left off this other woman who looks just like her and our girly is perhaps a scientist who is renowned for cloning basically and i'm just bored <laughs> i i don't want to spoil much for you but like i don't think i'm really enjoying the narrative voice she's very like cold and hard and scientific but i feel like that i mean that's sort of a uh, perspective i've enjoyed reading from before but it's without much like when i've read from it before it's like oh i'm this but i'm something else and i feel like we're not getting much nuance or variety to her character and here's the thing a lot of this book is she's reflecting on the way that her husband her ex-husband viewed her and the kind of perception he had on her and why that meant that he has this new wife and i just don't i don't like Thrones about husbands and wives. It's pitched as Big Little Lies, and I liked Big Little Lies because it was it was right about it was like about mothers. But I I think I like reading about that more than like always talking about how she was perceived through his eyes and like bringing the male gaze into this. Yeah, I want women. I want women. Enough of this man. <laughs> Women's stories matter. Yeah, yeah, right. they just and matter. They yeah. Do. yeah. 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 You know. I liked Big Little Lies because the, kind of, the husbands were kind of like irrelevant. Like it was all about the women and their relationships and like their interactions with each other. And yes, this is about the two wives kind of, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, you know, interactions, I want to say. But it's, there's a lot about her through her ex-husband's eyes and how he viewed her and how that's left her here or like her, her dad's eyes, like the, the way that he perceived her. And I'm just not into the male gaze. I don't want to hear about these men. I don't want to hear about what they thought. I don't want to hear that effect. I, it's, I'm bored. I'm really bored. I had to get the audiobook to make myself get through it. I'm going to edit what I've got of this video so far and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this today and just like speed read it. I'm really not enjoying it. I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> I just think it's so boring. And I also think, you know, it's about cloning her as a scientist she's known for cloning we're not really questioning whether cloning is a good idea <laughs> i don't know perhaps subliminally we are but i think there's more nuance and conversation that we could open up about like cloning isn't the best and i feel like we're not questioning certain aspects of it or like what kind of person is that and like we are, but I feel like it's surface level. Even if it's, if it's subliminal, it's surface level. We're not getting into the nitty gritty. And it just makes me a bit like, ugh, I'm just bored. I don't know what to say to you. I'm really not enjoying it. It's a short book, so like, it shouldn't have the time to leave me bored. We should just be go, go, go. I feel like nothing's happened. I'm really bored. So I'm having to like make myself read it. You know, I have no inclination to read this. I have to read it in order to get this video up. That's the only reason I'm reading it. So... Yeah, I'm gonna go edit for a bit and then I'm gonna finish this book and hopefully I'll like it a bit more, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so I just finished The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey and I'm actually gonna end up giving us a three star. I much preferred the second half, particularly I would say, oh, am I gonna give it a three star? It is teetering on 2.5, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I'm feeling generous. I feel like it, the last 50-ish pages kind of got it a three. I did like the ending of this. I thought that we got into some more interesting questions. I thought that particularly like the ending ending, I thought where it left our main character was very interesting, but I, I doesn't check the fact I felt bored the whole time. <laughs> it's the truth. Maybe not that last 50 pages, but like other than that, I was so bored. <laughs> I was thinking about it and I was thinking about how this felt to me like a book that was published in like 2018. It wasn't, it was 2021. But it felt like a book that was published in 2018 and if I had read it in 2018, I would have loved it. I would have thought, oh my God, this is the most like crazy thing, amazing premise ever. But I feel like, you know, A, with the times you have to keep innovating and keep doing something new, keep doing something fresh. But also like I have become much more well read, you know, and particularly in like thrillers and stuff that it just felt a bit commonplace do you know what I mean I never felt like I was reading something particularly exciting also I don't think it helps that so much of the book is in our protagonist's head with her thinking over things and talking us through her inner feelings and it just got a bit repetitive I just got a bit bored of it okay <laughs>
I also think it's a difficult book to discuss without spoilers, like to discuss in depth without spoiler spoilering. But um, I liked that it left certain questions unanswered. I do appreciate that. Um, I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to think of nice things to say. I don't know if I would rush to pick up another Sarah Gailey. The writing just, I don't know if it was my flavor and that's fine, you know, like not every book has to be for everyone, as we know in this life. I'm glad that I've read it, but it was a slog for a 250 page book. I'm probably not gonna think of this book much, but that last 30, 50 pages did enough to push it over into a three star. So it is about six o'clock, I think. I'm gonna try and rouse myself to do yoga. <laughs> I've just been reading this in bed and I've gotten way too comfy cozy. So I'm gonna try and rouse myself. I'm doing, I've been doing yoga every day in January and I know I'm like tired now, but I know I'll thank myself for it later because I'll feel so, I love yoga, particularly yoga with Adrian. I've been doing yoga with Adrian on and off since I was probably 14 <laughs> and I love her. I think my mental health is like entirely dependent on Adrian, I'm kidding. But yeah, I've got two instalments to do tonight because I missed yesterday's. So I need to do that and have a bath and have dinner. But then I'm gonna start the cartographers and I would really like to, I'd like to finish this by tomorrow. That's not happening. All right. So I would like to get at least a hundred pages in tonight and have a little, little chatty chat with you, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. One thing that's exciting me that I've noticed already is that there's like logs throughout and let me find, let me see if I can find an example. Yeah, there's pictures of maps throughout, which really excites me. That's different. I'm, <laughs> oh, there's a cat hair in my eye. The cats have been cuddling me a lot today, which I'm very lucky for, but oh my God, they're fur. I feel like I, I am, I don't know if you can see, I'm probably covered in it. I didn't change my top before coming and speaking to you. Ah, okay. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try and rouse myself to do some yoga, have my dinner, have a bath, and then I might see you this evening or I might see you in the morning, a hundred pages in. I've also got the audiobook for this one and it looks like it is full cast in some way or does have multiple voice actors. Oh, the maps makes me excited. Okay, I know this is gonna be iffy because it has been controversial, but I'm excited to get into it. I'm 100 pages into the cartographers. I wanted to finish this today. It is only half eight, so I can get some good reading done this evening, but I am not feeling super motivated to read it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, 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 so. Our protagonist and her father are both cartographers. They both love maps. They both love looking into maps, learning about maps. But her dad and her had this massive argument about seven years ago, uh, where he like got her fired from the library that all the big cartographers worked at. And she's been kind of blacklisted because of that. And they've never spoken. And then he dies, he dies. And in when she goes to the library to kind of go to see the police and stuff, she finds in his briefcase, the map that caused him to have this big argument that she found one day amongst other maps. And that's why he like blew up at her and got her fired over this map. It becomes clear that perhaps there's some people who want this map. It is a very ordinary map. It's like a map of like some old gas station highway in America. Like it has, it. we can't understand yet why it's so important, but it becomes clear that people are willing to kill for this map. Too much drama for me. I do want to say, 100 pages in, we don't yet, like people have been listening to this fantasy, magical realism, that hasn't come into play yet. It's all very much our world, our world's rules at the moment. And I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> where's this gonna go? It's not bad, I'm enjoying it, but I don't feel connected to it. I don't feel like inspired to read. You know, I'm just, in, it's fine. If I had to rate it now, I'd say a 3.5. You know, that's my current enjoyment. Where when I'm reading it, I'm like, oh yeah, good, fun, you know? But, mm. <laughs> but when I'm not, I don't feel particularly, yeah, excited to read it, I guess. So I just, I don't know. I think what some people have not liked about this is the ending. It doesn't really succeed with what it wants to do. And I think this is gonna go off the rails a bit and go, get a bit weird. I'm excited that I'm finally reading it. I just don't know if it's not what I necessarily wanna be reading at the moment or if I'm making myself read because I really just wanna get this video done <laughs> and move on with my life. Cause this video for some reason has been really delayed. I don't really understand why. Or if it's just not grabbing me, you know? I don't know. And um, the audiobook is fine. The audiobook isn't making me get through it any quicker. So anyway, I'm gonna try and chill out this evening and 
I guess we'll just see what happens. <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. Hello, hello. Apologies if I look a bit rough. It's the end of the day. <laughs> If you're a One Direction fan back in the day, that is going to give you war flashbacks. I'm on page 270 of the cartographers. Miko, I just sat down. Can you not wait like two minutes for me to let you out? Miko! Miko! Whenever the door's shut, he acts as if he's never going to escape. He's like, let me out! Come say hi! Yeah! Me and Miko have been having so many cuddles lately. But he doesn't like cuddles if he's not in the mood. If he doesn't instigate them, he says, no way, Jose. Right, I shall let you out before I start talking. Come on then. Now you're not in the mood. Now you don't want to go out. Come on. If you're going to go out, go out now. So I can shut it again. Apologies if you hear noises from downstairs. I've left a gap. Oh, he's now rubbing up on the tripod. Oh, yeah. We love the tripod so much. My dad's watching a video downstairs. So apologies if you can hear the noise. But <laughs> he couldn't decide to leave or not. And he loves the tripod so much. Yeah. But you don't like being on camera, huh? You say, that's not my job. <laughs> Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Anyway, yeah, I'm on page 270 of the cartographers. And I keep oscillating between being really interested and like interested in the concept and what's going on and what's happening. And then being really bored. <laughs> I actually feel like the last section, Hi, I'm just gonna get distracted by your beauty. <laughs> I actually feel like the last section was pretty good. I really enjoyed, I've just been making shepherd's pie <laughs> and I've really been enjoying the last section. Oh, we love the book. Yeah, I keep going between the two. I think the pacing hasn't been the best, right? I think the pacing <laughs> needs a little work. And I think it's waited too long to get into the fantastical element of the book. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there was a section, a good maybe 80 pages where that needed to come into play for the book to be more interesting. It just kind of has, which is quite a late stage in the book. And this whole other storyline is kind of happening that wasn't happening at, at the start. But you know, I love, I do love the kind of map studying setting. Like they're at the, the public library and this is, is described is like ornate and detailed and like it reminds me of how I loved Babel and the the study of linguistics I think I love reading about like people who are scholars who are passionate about their <laughs> area of study like I just think that's something I do really enjoy I don't think the writing is incredible but I don't dislike it but I'm not I, I'm sitting here right now I'm not looking forward to reading it but when I'm reading it I'm like okay yeah fine you know but I'm not like oh I can't wait to read it I am gonna read it tonight I'm gonna finish it tonight because I'm a determined woman <laughs> And this video has to finally go up. It was supposed to go up on Sunday. It was supposed to go up on Tuesday. Now it's hopefully going up on Thursday. This cannot, this vlog, I don't know what's happened. Like my life has fallen apart a little bit in the past couple of days. But that's kind of my prevailing feelings on it is that, yeah, it's enjoyable. I have a lot of, like I think it's fairly obvious what's going on. And all the reviews that are negative don't like the ending. So I'm intrigued to see where I fall on that line, but I would say I'm enjoying it. Like I'm not hating it. Yeah, I feel like the ending is either gonna be the kind of ending that I love and everyone else hates, or I hate because everyone else hates. I don't know, but I will see you probably in the morning with my final thoughts. Do we wanna do this or should we just like cut the video here and pretend that this hasn't happened? No, okay, right, let's talk about it. I finished the cartographers. I feel like you're very close in to me. Oh, that's even closer. <laughs> I finished the cartographers and I'm giving it a 2.5. Oh no, this has now gone downhill. And that's like a very conflicted 2.5 because there's a the thing, there's elements of this that I loved. Like I keep saying this, I kept going back and forth between loving it and being so incredibly bored. I don't know what the next book I'm reading uh, yet is. I might be unwrapping it today and finding out. <laughs> wink, wink for what's coming next week. I need the next book I read to not be one that bores me. Like the last two books, they haven't necessarily been bad, but I have not felt excited to read. That's, what, that's all I ask for is I want to feel excited to read, you know? A book doesn't have to be good for me to be excited to read it. I can be like hate reading a book. Survive Tonight is always my <laughs> top example. But like at least get me feeling something. The ending to this just wasn't, it wasn't good. <laughs> so 
be honest, I have like almost zero understanding of what actually happened at the ending of this. Like what actually was the resolution. I just feel like the book, the pacing was not good, right? We'd go through moments where like, oh great, I'm finally so excited to read, I had to not happen. And then we'd like go on these long, guess what, dual timeline stories. And it would all be ruined. <laughs> The ending, it was incredibly obvious. Once you got to a certain point, you're like, hang on, I'm connecting the dots here and uh, it's pretty obvious what's about to happen and who's gonna be the bad person here, you know? And the like resolution just like makes the whole rest of the book feel pointless to me, right? And if you want me to care about the characters and like what all these different characters have gone through and the pain and the trauma and the tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. <laughs> Yeah, if you want me to care about that, don't make the ending something that just makes that all a waste. I also think it's forgettable. I don't think I'm gonna remember much of it. But like I said, that it's a conflicting review. It's a conflicting rating because there were elements that I loved. I loved the scholarly vibes. There were moments where a plot twist happened or we were given some information. I was so into it. I was like, yeah, let's go. And then I was like, oh. <sighs> The feeling quickly dissipated. It was a roller coaster, me and this book. In this vlog, out of what TBR Kudo picked, we had one roaring success that I am so happy that I finally got round to. And then we had two pretty disappointing books. I mean, it was like a three star, but I was bored. I, these were boring. These were boring. <laughs> I'm just really hoping whatever book I have to read next is, oh, it's exciting. It gets me going, you know? So that's it. <laughs> for the vlog. This vlog has been going on forever for no reason, by the way. I've had the weirdest week in terms of like productivity and like getting stuff. I don't even know what's happened to me. It's been a weird week, okay? So thank you for watching it. I'm glad it's done. I'm gonna go edit these last few clips and then it's out of my life and I'm pretending this vlog never existed because for some reason it was very painful. I feel like I'm getting ill and it's all this vlog's fault. No, um, if you got into the end of the video, what should we comment? Comment the map emoji or like the push pin, like the location push pin emoji. Comment any of them down below. Thank you guys for watching. We will see if we ever trust TV Arguino again. <laughs> and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.